It's a royal walkabout, but one with a difference. A hereditary monarch turned Republican politician. A king who's become a prime minister. Tsar <laughs> Simeon II of Bulgaria is the first Eastern European monarch to regain power since the fall of communism. And he's done so through the ballot box, with a stunning victory in national elections last month. Tonight, an exclusive encounter with the king come prime minister, a cousin of Queen Elizabeth II, through the German side of her family, the saxe coburgs Simeon Saxe-Coburg has had a storybook life. Your Majesty, there does seem to be genuine enthusiasm amongst the people for you. What is it about you, do you think, that is appealing to the oh, Bulgarian people? Oh, about me, I don't think there's much. It's maybe about what we are offering. Maybe in a way the historic burden I carry, but that's not my merit. It comes from my forebears, it's Bulgaria's history, but somehow maybe people see me in it. While Simeon embodies Bulgaria's turbulent history, he also embodies its hopes for the future, of finally turning its back on the communist era and moving from the fringes of Europe into its prosperous heart. It's the extraordinary saga of one man, but also of a country, paradoxically both religious and yet once a jewel in the crown of the godless Soviet Empire. Until 12 years ago, Bulgaria was Moscow's gatekeeper against the western bulwarks of Greece and Turkey and a fiercely loyal member of the Warsaw Pact. Now it's a vigorous democracy led by a victim of communism and a royal one at that, one who dreams of restoring Bulgaria's pre-war eminence as the Switzerland of the Balkans. The country has suffered extraordinarily, hasn't it? There's no question about that. Unfortunately, we've been very unlucky. And you're being seen by many people as the answer to their woes. It's a huge expectation on your shoulders, isn't it? Far too much. And I say I only have two hands and a fairly tired head. But if we all join and really work and look forward and forget a whole lot of things and try and put this past behind us for good, chances are. But I'm here. Sorry, Bulgaria came out of an extraordinary 500 years of Ottoman domination and really advanced enormously in those days with the technology we had then. So with today's technology, my God, I think we can really come up with some pretty quick and good results. The King come Prime Minister has set a deadline of 800 days to change the lives of his 8 million charges for the better. And to do that, he's assembled a team of expatriate Bulgarian businessmen, economists and lawyers to help steer the country forward. His right-hand man and campaign manager is a New York real estate magnate who describes the King's prime role as an international salesman for Bulgaria. As we know, there is a lot of money in the world and very few good deals. We would like to make Bulgaria a good deal. These people are children of socialism. They don't know how the real capitalist system, uh, what is all about. We're here to tell them it's not that bad. It's good. So the agenda is to plunge the country even deeper into the currents of the free market and also swim with mainstream Europe by joining the European Union and NATO. Already in the capital, Sofia, are all the trademarks of Western-style free enterprise. Yet the average state worker here earns a salary of 1,200 US dollars a year. And for most Bulgarians, money is in desperately short supply. It fuels a level of public corruption that pervades Bulgarian society from the top down, and which the king has pledged to eradicate. 
almost any government official is desperate to get his or her hands on any money. One could imagine what the level of corruption would be if half of the national economy is put up for sale in one go by the same officials who are meant to administer the sale. Thanks to the communists, many people still have somewhere to live in the Stalinist-style apartments that dot the main centres. But everywhere are the derelict reminders of where they used to work, the failure of the controlled economy and an entire system. The outgoing Prime Minister Ivan Kostov did what he could to revive the economy, but all the razzmatazz in the world couldn't save him. Did Mr. Kostov deserve to die? No, he did not. He was probably one of the better Bulgarian prime ministers since the end of communism. But like every politician, he ultimately had to carry the can for very unpopular uh, economic measures that had to be taken, which basically eradicated inflation, but also created a large level of unemployment. While there have been five elections since the fall of communism, each of which has produced a degree of reform, Bulgaria is still in an economic rut. A jobless rate of 20%, for instance, that leaves many wondering whether democracy is all it's cracked up to be. So what's happened here is remarkable even by the topsy-turvy standards of Balkans politics. The electorate repudiating mainstream politicians, not in favour of the communists, but someone the comrades toppled nearly 60 years ago. A man who's turned history well and truly on its head. We've seen pictures of you as a child, you uh, and your aeroplane pedal uh, machine. Do you remember that? Yes, indeed. Um, it seemed to have been an uh, idyllic childhood that you had. Till the age of six. Cut short by the death of your father. Then I became a grown-up, so that's why I feel so terribly old, because I've been a grown-up since the age of six. Of all the fates that Providence can deal a child, few can be as cruel as the one dealt to Simeon Saxe Coburg, propelled in an instant onto the throne when his father, Tsar Boris, was struck down in mysterious circumstances in 1943. There's a very famous clip of you as a boy reviewing a line of troops. Oh, yes, 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 one of our little guard there in Sofia. You seem to be much older than, than your age at the time. <laughs> it was thrust upon you, wasn't it? Well, I suppose so. Anybody would be in the same position as me. How did it feel to inherit the throne under those circumstances? So oh, young. Oh, you know, a child doesn't see it in the optique that I see it now. But I know that it did impress me very much, and the fact that people referred to me as they used to refer to Daddy, well, that suddenly shocked me. Mm. Simeon ruled nominally for just three years before fate dealt him another blow, forced into exile with the communist takeover of Bulgaria in 1946. Did you have any inkling at that age that it would take so long for you to come back? No, well, I came back after 50 years, minus three months. The child sees things differently, but what I never thought is that I would come back and live to see and be able to be again a normal citizen of this country and to travel around it and visit places. In exile, the king went first to Egypt and then to Spain. During that period in exile in Spain, what did you do? Because I've read accounts of well, you being a playboy, a successful businessman. A playboy? Yes. Good Lord, that's really the last thing. Everybody considers me such a social bore that that's a compliment now at 64 to know that I've been a playboy as a young boy. So you, you were know, typecast as monarchs I uh, was right, always, in exile sometimes are. I was uh, very closely watched and educated by my mother, who was a very strict person, may she rest in peace. And I was always very conscious of the name I bought. Simeon Sachs Coburg did become a businessman, and by all accounts, a successful one. 
he's been engaged in commercial activities, especially in Spain. And to his credit, he is neither fussy, not particularly hoity, not with any snobbish affectations. He did try to make a living. What and sort of business are we talking about? Well, we're talking effectively about commerce business, import, export, the kind of business that boomed in Spain in the 60s and the 70s as the Franco dictatorship collapsed there. As far as I'm aware, it was all perfectly legitimate and on the whole very successful. As the King tells it, it was the night the Berlin Wall came down that he realized the tide of history was turning, not just for his country, but himself. I didn't think I would live to see the collapse of the Soviet Empire. Somehow I had the feeling that this would go on and on and on. And when it did collapse, how did you feel? I was terribly moved. Uh, we watched TV with the Berlin Wall coming down, and two of my sons were there, and they suddenly said, Dad, why do you have tears in your eyes? I said, kid, when you grow up, you'll understand what it means to me. In 1996, the then government, which was still communist, though elected, invited the king to visit Bulgaria. No one, least of all the king himself, expected the magnitude of what happened in Sofia that day. How did you feel that day? I could